Welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. My name is Reverend Jennifer Innes, and it is my pleasure to serve as the minister with this congregation of people of all ages at all stages of life. This is a beloved community striving to live its mission of embracing freedom, loving wholeheartedly, growing in mind, body, and spirit, and adding to the wholeness and the healing of the world. We welcome people of all ethnicities and races, sexual orientations and gender identities, social and economic situations, and abilities, and politics. Yes, the politics. We advocate for human rights, and we strive to be good stewards of this earth. In living our mission, we recognize the network of relationships of which we are a part. This is the ancestral home of the Peoria people. They and other nations were here long before the first year European settlers came down the river. So every moment and we gather, uh, every time we gather in worship, we take a moment to honor the Peoria people for who they were and for who they are today. I want to tell you, I just, it just, I had this moment just as we were starting. One of the best sounds I think is in the world is the sound of people entering the church. Is the sound of people coming in and finding a spot and getting settled. Yes, yes. So thank you for joining us in person and online. We have realized in the last few years how much, how precious it is to gather together to expand our circles of care and kindness. So if you are new, please help us get to know you. We have plenty of name tags. We, are wel we welcome all the questions and we'll probably have some for you as well if you're new to us. So I invite you to stay after the service and visit in Fellowship Hall or stay online in the Zoom and have a chat there. And I also want to invite folks to be sure after the service to take a moment and greet your neighbor. This Sunday, the Sunday as we're gathering uh, in these days, all kinds of people come and find us, and we want to make sure that we are saying hello. Also, I want to ask folks to take a moment uh, to turn to your electronic devices. Don't greet your neighbor, but turn to your electronic devices, right? and set them into worship mode, please. Silent or buzzy, those are good choices. I have a few notes uh, for today. One after the service will be a chance for folks who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, intersex, asexual plus to gather in the conference room um, and maybe explore a social, having a social group uh, an affinity group, making connections. We recognize that people come in with all kinds of interests and needs. Um, so this might be a little bit different than a covenant group, but we want to make sure that people are connected. And we want to see Tim Harold uh, for that, for information after the service. Also, also we have lined up a holiday pageant uh, lined up for next Sunday. This is an all-ages event. It's an extravaganza of all ages, I'm going to say. And what's the title? The, the Latka? The Latka Who Couldn't Stop Screaming. And it's a holiday pageant. So you're going to see many holidays show up in this. So I want to invite folks to participate. Um, children of all ages are welcome. And by all means, see Jesse. And... Uh, I want to take a moment to point out something that's happening also after the service next Sunday. We have the mandatory parent, uh, parent orientation for the Our, Our Whole Lives program for grades 5 and 6. Uh, the program will start just after the new year. So Our Whole Lives is the comprehensive sexuality education program that is in our association and has classes at every major stage of life. And OWL, as we usually call it, is one of our most significant education programs, especially in a time when bodily autonomy is more important than ever. So I want to invite you, if 
if you're interested in the Our Whole Lives program and a parent or know maybe, maybe know a child or so who might be interested in that program, by all means, please see Jesse. And before I get started into worship, I just want to offer a note of thanks in case you've noticed that the sanctuary up here is a little bit transformed from last week. There was so much, there was a frenzy of decorating that happened last, after last Sunday, and also yesterday for the Deck the Halls, and we have the Christmas tree is now fully bedecked, so thank you to everybody who was part of bidding, bringing the decorations down and put them up. All right. For our opening hymn, we're going to do one that we've done a few times before in a number of moments gathered here. And I want to invite us to do this one in a round. So if you would please rise in body or spirit, and we will listen once, sing together. And I think, oh, we have so many people. Let's see what we're going to do. We're going to do two parts. We're going to keep it simple. We're going to do two parts today. So one half and the other half. And I trust that all the voices in each half can be big enough to balance each other out. I have faith. I have faith. And so let us listen, we'll sing together, and then I will lead the different parts. Please be seated. Our opening words are by Reverend Dr. Rebecca A. Savage. Welcome, Mystery. As people of faith and wonder, we welcome in the delight of mystery, the awe of unfolding adventure, the expansiveness of what it means to behold mystery as a gift to the imagination. Too often, we relax into our routines, find comfort in old habits, and give in to the confines of our lives. In this time of worship together, may our hearts be nudged open to what may be. May our spirits be wrapped in curiosity to seek mystery and welcome her in. May our time together this day remind us to stay open, stay inquisitive of what we do not yet understand, and be inspired to stretch ourselves 
into new ways of being. Welcome, mystery. Welcome into our hearts and our time of worship together. Let me invite the Cordonaway family forward for our chalice lighting. In the mystery about us, there is light. In the mystery of life about us, there is light. It gives us a place to be, to grow, to rejoice together. It opens the pathways to love. In this place of friendship, there is freedom. Let the light we kindle go before us, strong in hope, wide in goodwill, inviting the day to come. I invite us into a moment of reflection, a moment of presence, a moment when we can add a little light into the world. During our music for meditation, you are welcome to come forward and light candles at our table for all the joys, the sorrows, all that is within your hearts. And if you're online, I will invite you to light candles too or take heart in the candles that we light on your behalf. Let us enter into this time of reflection and meditation.
we enter into this moment moved by all that is in the world. The wonders of the seasons and the turnings of the cycles that are around us, even on the gray days. The mystery of love that is between us and present within us in so many ways, in our lives, in our hearts, in amongst between people who do not know each other. We have chosen to be together in a moment and hold that as precious unto itself. And we expand our circle of care whenever possible. And we add that in the process of sharing our joys and sorrows. I want to offer first congratulations to Evan and Jennifer Stubbs for the occasion of moving into a new house. Congratulations. It is no small thing. Yes. We have a note. Uh, from a, at a distance from Mary Mahal and Kafar. Uh, she is sharing the joy that she is settling in with new chosen family and a new congregation. And she is sharing the sorrow that she misses all of us. We offer notes of encouragement and healing to Bert Rabbi. Uh, he had shoulder surgery on Tuesday, and he is doing great. So yay for Bert, and may he continue to progress well. We offer a note of condolence to Pat Harris and her family. That Pat's brother, Mike, lost his wife, Sheila, just after Thanksgiving. And Sheila's memorial will be here this coming Saturday. Let us extend our sympathy and care to Pat and Mike and to their whole family. I want to turn to our larger world for a moment. I want to lift up two remarkable women, Rosalind Carter and Sandra Day O'Connor. Rosalind was such a wonderful first lady with President Jimmy Carter, a partner and an independent spirit committed to service as much as he was, and she was remembered this week. And Justice Sandra Day O'Connor was at the time one of the most powerful women in the country in her service on the Supreme Court and in her life leading up to that moment. We cherish her memory and her legacy as well. And I want to lift up a remarkable man who was also remembered this week and is being continued to be celebrated and remembered for some time to come, Bishop Carlton Pearson. Carlton Pearson was a black Pentecostal preacher who gained national renown when he had a conversion experience and found a gospel of inclusion and started preaching an inclusive, welcoming presence. He was connected to All Souls Unitarian Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, after, the, uh, after this conversion experience really shifted and meant the loss of most of his congregation. He was as energized as someone of been around him in person, he was as energized in person as he was on screen. And he's left quite a deep, powerful message of inclusion across the world. And a final note of sorrow. For our hearts that break as relief efforts showed the extent of the destruction in Gaza. And now we have the resumption of Israel's military push, we lift our hearts for all people caught in this violence, for all that has been lost, and for all that will be lost. Let us hold one more moment in quiet, 
one more moment to be present in this time. Let us pause and breathe together, together in this moment. Amin, shalom, salam. Let me invite Jesse for a story. Sometimes in this great big world, we experience something that takes our breath away. Something that makes us wonder, that inspires awe. And people all over this great big world have different names for that something. Some call it love, the divine. When we as you use look at our six sources of wisdom and spirituality, Sources that draw from places as diverse as science, poetry, scripture, and personal experience, we have many names to choose from. Sometimes it can be useful to think of that something as a person. And we might call that something God. This story is one of those times. The mystery of God by Marianne Moore. One time, when some children were playing hide and seek with God, one of them found God hiding in the wind, and another found God in the beautiful music, and another found God hiding in people who were helping build homes for those who didn't have any. When the game was over, the children thought, hmm, it would be nice if this was a little different. I don't want to see God in lots of different things. I want to see all of God, all at once. And other children agreed. So they said, God, next time when you hide and seek and we find you, we want to see all of you, all at once. Surprised by this request, God thought, hmm, that's not as easy as these children think. They don't even know that they can't. I don't even know all of me. How can I show them all of me, all at once? Hmm, after a while, God had an idea. And calling the children, God said, all right, I'll hide again. And this time, when you find me, you will be able to see me all at once. The children jumped up and down. They were so excited. But, said God, be ready for a surprise. Hmm, what will they find? God said, I'm ready to hide now. Close your eyes, count to 10. So the children did, and they went to seek. This time, they stayed together. And they looked and looked, but they didn't find anything for quite some time, until finally, they discovered a box, all wrapped up, kind of like a present. They looked at each other and said, could this be God? Let's open it. And what they saw did surprise them. It looked like lots and lots of puzzle pieces. 
And they heard God say, Put me together, and you will see all of me all at once. So the children began to work, and everyone helped. And one piece was a loving heart. And next to that was a piece that gave a peaceful feeling. And next to that fitted a family that was sharing with others. They found the new growth of spring and a piece that was a powerful thunderstorm. And they found a person and the sky and the earth. But those were only parts. They worked and worked and worked, and finally, as they came to the end of the puzzle, they noticed the pieces that were left were nothing. And they said to God, is this truly all of you all at once? And God said, yes. But one child said, there's some pieces that we don't see. That's true, said God. Those pieces are where my mystery is. You see, said God, there is much of me that is a mystery. That is where my wonders and surprises come from. Hmm. The children stood and looked at their finished puzzle. With the places where the mystery was, and they knew that they now knew something wonderful. I would wonder what mysteries you know and what wonderful things you find. I invite the kids to join me for religious education. Today we get to rehearse our pageant. So if any extra adults want to come, you're welcome too. <laughs> Let me just offer, I have not actually, of all the pageants I've done, I've not actually the lock, done the laka that couldn't stop screaming, so I am looking forward to this adventure. And kind of in the spirit of trying new things, welcoming abundance and putting ourselves out there, this is also a moment, this offering moment, because this moment of gathering in and intentionally giving during our service is not just about the practice of every Sunday we do the thing, because every Sunday we do the thing, right? This is not a habit that is, that is just simply a matter of how we do the things. It is also an opportunity. This is an opportunity and an affirmation, a yes to what we hold dear to what we might offer of ourselves into the world. We say yes when we give away something. We say yes when we offer something that we hold dear in living our values. And we do so with a free spirit. And part of what we also do with a free spirit is share a bit of our plate. So we have uh, one third of our undesignated offering every Sunday is gathered up and sent to a local group of um, doing service in our area. And now we're in December for our local group for this month is the local chapter of the Peoria NAACP. And this particular branch founded in 1915 
works for justice and equity in all aspects of life, uh, voting, education, housing, employment, and justice. And so this is an opportunity to offer a direct help to folks who are doing such good work with us. So keep in mind, so the undesignated plate, a third goes to, will go to NAACP locally, and two-thirds go to the church operating. Please indicate that in the envelopes or in your check, or go and check out the QR code in the order of service. And I want to invite the ushers to please come forward and pass the plates. Our reading for today is one of, from one of our Universalist ancestors, the Reverend Gordon B. McKeeman. How does one address a mystery? How does one address a mystery? Cautiously. Let us go cautiously then to the end of our certainty to the boundary of all that we know, to the rim of uncertainty, to the perimeter of the unknown which surrounds us. Reverently, let us go with a sense of awe, a feeling of approaching the holy, whose lightning slashes the sky, whose persistence splits concrete with green sprouts, whose miracles are present in every place and every moment. Hopefully, out of our need for wholeness in our own lives, the reconciliation of mind and heart, the conjunction of reason and passion, and the intersection of timeless with time. Quietly. For no words will explain the inarticulate or summon the presence that always is presence, even in our absence. But what shall I say? What shall I say? Anything. Anything. Any anger, any hope, any fear, any joy any request, any word that comes from the depth of being addressed to being itself. Or perhaps 
nothing. No complaint, no request, no entreaty, no thanksgiving, no praise, no blame, no pretense of knowing or not knowing. Simply be in the intimate presence of mystery, unshamed, unadorned, unafraid. And at the end say, Amen. So entering into a reflection on mystery usually takes us out of language and into feeling and experience. And so we're more about the feeling with this next hymn, given that it is in Latin. I'm going to presume that not many of us took all that much Latin. But in case you're wondering, in case you need the words, the translation is give us peace. So we will listen and then sing through three times together. Please rise in body or spirit.
Please be seated. I want to begin in the dark of the night and the light of the moon. In my small town in Massachusetts is mostly woods and reservoirs and farms, along with homes and some strips of businesses. There is a small state park in an area where the mills used to run and uh, with the benefit of the water that flowed from the stream and the reservoir there, and they would grind grain and cut lumber. Now, way back, about starting when I could drive, there were these wonderful summer nights when the moon was full and the night was clear and dry and I really wanted to get out of the house. So I would drive to the park at, in the night and park in the area and turn off the headlights and there was only the light of the moon. The fields were open, bordered by beautiful trees and there was the road and the stone wall lining the fields also lined with trees. And I knew the ground well enough to walk from the parking area through the fields and up to the very highest point in the park area, in the neighboring farm. And that highest point really set me just enough above everything that I could see the horizon expanding for miles all the way around and certainly could see the vast expanse of the cosmos above. To the east was the city, Worcester, Massachusetts, and that whole hazy light pollution kind of glow from it. And to nearly every other place, the west, there were some glows of some of the city, of the town centers some miles away. But mostly to the west was a few street lights and house lights and just an expanse of dark and the night sky above. There seemed to be not much difference between the few twinkling street lights and the stars. There wasn't another city from that perspective for miles and miles. And there was the above, the night sky, the stars and the Milky Way and the moon in its full silver and white light. That was, I'm going to say, a little moment of personal worship. That was simply to be bathed in that light. And I could and did breathe it in entirely, the glory of that dark and the sharpness of the light. And simply was present for as long as I could hold the moment in wonder with nothing between myself and the sky. It seemed that in the dark of the night and the light of the moon that I could know things for more of what they really were. Not have this bright, energetic sun in the way. But here was the night and the light that came with it and what was revealed just there. We spend a lot of time with night and light this month. There are so many holidays and holy days and faith traditions that show up in this time for all kinds of reasons. And they work with that relationship between night and light and the deep mysteries that come with that cosmic encounter, that questioning of existence, that wondering if life shall renew again. 
Now I'm entering into exploring the theme of mystery for this month, so I fully recognize the folly of preaching on something that defies words. That's okay. But I want us to spend a moment on mystery because it is all around us and we aren't getting away from it. And a couple of days ago, I sent a note out to some of our electronic methods and asked for thoughts about the mystery. And here's some of your responses. It could be simply, the question of mystery could simply be curiosity, kind of just for the fun of it. You know, in this time we have advent calendars of all kinds, for example. Somebody had a, a sampler of coffee with the coffee that's, the coffees are all different, but they're not labeled. So try, some people will be like, <laughs> you mean it's not labeled? No. And simply the adventure of trying the coffee and figuring out which one, what it was like, did you like it, and more. Just straight up joy. But there's a deeper element of curiosity, one that invites us to be drawn in. It's kind of that impulse that we can't resist getting a little closer. To return, it invites us to return to places where we encounter that curiosity and mysterious happenings again and again, like gardening, for example and the continual experience of the cycles of plants and all around us. I'm someone who heads to the sea whenever possible, or to the night, or simply a walk to observe the world. One of the examples of mystery was to be at the edge of knowing, to be at the edge of encounter, the edge of being. I like that one in that particular, because we're just on the precipice of something different, of an, of an experience that is not quite usual, but is also so common, is inherent in our life. In that moment, that understanding of mystery that's kind of piercing a veil of perception, of pulling something back just a little bit, but still not fully comprehend, like those bead door curtains, right? You're like, I know something is there, but I'm not entirely sure. And it's sensed rather than defined. That mystery is one of great, the great characteristics of mystery is, of course, its inherent inability to be defined. And yet still all around us, and yet still a comfort for many of us, the vastness of all that is just, just beyond our reach. I'm fascinated uh, in mystery by layers, how you pull back layers of things and keep finding mystery all the way down. I think it was long ago, probably in some planetarium uh, conversation, there was the reminder that the dark of the cosmos, it's still all around us, even when the sun is shining and the sky is blue. Even in the middle of the day, our earth is wrapped in night. Right? I think mystery is one of those universal experiences in, hum in, in our humanity that we keep trying to figure out again and again. And so much of our, our religious and spiritual practice is in response to what do we do with mystery and what does it do with us? And how we respond, how we generate our rituals and our practices and our uh, cosmologies and more is in relationship, is kind of nature and nurture both about talking about how we are wired how what spurs imagination, what spurs curiosity, problem solving, what, it, what dream, brings us into connection. I like this, the engineering of, of mystery, right? The problem solving impulse there. Sitting with mystery, I think, is part of our 
survival, our response to the wonder of the world, figuring out how shall we get to the next day, how shall we get to continue our lives. I think sitting with mystery is an intimate experience, as Gordon McKeeman says, and part of every religious tradition of which I am aware. And it's all part of the highly subjective um, uh, questions around us of existence. Where do we come from in that uh, song? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? These are the questions behind the question of how does one address a mystery. And it's part of our core practice, this mystery thing in Unitarian Universalism. Our first source talks about from which we draw, talks about direct experience of transcending mystery and wonder affirmed in all cultures, what moves us to a renewal of the spirit and an openness to the forces that create and uphold life. This is part of how we engage with our lives. And the proposed language that we're coming up to for talking about um, our inspirations a little bit different than sources, but our inspirations also has direct experience of transcending mystery and wonder, that these would open our hearts, renew our spirits, and transform our lives. I so appreciate, and this has been part of our practice, we've recognized this intentionally all the way back in our history, as far as I can tell, I appreciate the more recent incarnation, for example, of the Universalists in the early 20th century, the Humiliati. Um, their symbol was a circle with an off-center cross. They were not putting a cross or any symbol at the center of the circle representing the cosmos. Because they knew they needed to leave that space. And leaving that space is as much a part for mystery, is as much a part of our theology as trusting reason and science and rational thought. We are counseled to heed the guidance of reason and the results of science that warn us against idolatry. That warn us against idolatry. So we're not going to hold any one understanding of any one theology or any one God or any one creed or a statement of faith as the statement of faith. Because we allow for that space to be open, that mystery to be present. We wonder and question and navigate what to hold on to and what to let go of, especially with science and nature. The woods next to us being as much a teacher as any of the books in our lovely library. This is true for us, and it's true for our children, and we have been operating from that for a long time. And into the universe, into the universe we shout and send forth and sometimes toot the organ and because we have all of these feelings and experiences in our human existence, the enormity of which we often don't know what to do with. And that too is part of the mystery. But Gordon McKeeman reminds us that the vastness, that the universe, that all that is, is can hold all of it, can hold everything that is within us, everything we might throw at it, too, in our anger, in frustration, in sorrow and grief. We, it, we can throw all of that out there, too. It's not simply the pretty things. It's also what is hard and what is a struggle and what is not just and frustrating and impossible. 
There's one particular aspect of mystery that breaks my heart, though. And that's when that spark of life, that particular thing that animates all the living things, when that spark stops. One moment, something is moving and alive, and the next, it is still, never to be animated again. A gradual and, and gradual and maybe expected progress towards death is difficult. Is heartbreaking in its own way, but can often provide enough time to shift and adjust and grieve at least a bit, say farewell to the people we love when we face that. There's so many other ways that we come to our mortal end, so many speeds and states, unresolved, unresolved. The one that really gut punches me is the abrupt and the violent ones. And I want to recognize how much the news has been full of those abrupt deaths. The mystery of death in war. The mystery of our mortality and how we bring it upon ourselves. Because encountering mystery is not all hope and light, right? The vastness and all it contains includes despair and sorrow and anger and rage and fear. To the point where we would other another living creature so much that we would not regard them as worthy of life. Many of the celebrations and holy days of this season include this threat of death or a disruptive end and questions, anxious questions about whether there will be a future. The questions of this month include, will the lamp oil last after the temple was desecrated? Will the light return at the long, after the long end of the night? Will the child be born? Will the empire snuff out the child's life before it even begins? By addressing the mystery, we come to that edge of existence. We come to that wondering, the hoping for meaning. Where do we come from? What are we? And where are we going? What is the significance of my life? And this is regardless of any particular faith or lack thereof. It is a moment with mystery. This question of life and death. It is to be bare and exposed and revealed. To remember that the night and the moon can show more truth than the sun. And that there is nothing between you or me and everything. We enter into this edge of existence holding, holding breath, almost holding the heart to keep it from beating, holding. And then also part of the mystery is the letting go and the breathing again and the returning back to self 
It is that is part of that being intimate with mystery. The life and the death and all that is in between. And that the breath that reminds us of life is part of that mystery too, as is the beating heart. The engagement with mystery this month is another kind of thinning of the veil. It's not just the thinning of the veil that we see at um, Samhain and All Hallows Eve and All Souls, but in all of life. It is in this season we come forth with memories and relationships and hopes and expectations. Those all come into this time Regardless of the, what the Christmas retail machine does, our senses are stimulated. We are encouraged to pay attention to the vastness, sometimes the singing of the carols is a shouting. We navigate this encounter, not, not in just one moment, this encounter with mystery, but over the whole month because we need all that time and all the ways that it shows up. So I invite you, I invite us, to spend time with mystery this month. Discover what emerges. I also want to note you're welcome to come and join us for on Thursday evenings uh, up until Christmas for um, an hour of quiet contemplation in the dark, in the sanctuary. It certainly is given the form from Advent, but it's not ultimately attached to the Christian story. Because people have lit candles and waited in the night for as long as we've been human. Or follow your own practice of being quiet and open, knowing that you have companions along the way. I invite us to address the mystery with curiosity, humility, caution, and quiet. That we let ourselves attend to the vast horizon before us and all that it compasses, the life and the death and all the seasons. Let the mystery be with us and may we be with the mystery. Amen. Please rise and body your spirit for our closing hymn number 126. It is in the gray hymnal if you'd like to look at the word, at the music.
sending our light into the world. As breath to song by Becky Laurent. As flame is to spirit, so spirit is to breath, and breath to song. Though we extinguish the flame in the sanctuary, may we tend it in our hearts until we meet again. Just following after the great Perseid meteor, we are the living remnants of time and all that has come to pass in its wake, briefly shining lights on the way to eternity. We are only visible to the naked eye for an instant. Take this moment to shine like the stardust you are. May the light of our time on earth shine to bless the world and each other. Shine, shine, shine. Our worship is ended. Let our service and shining begin. 